A Sealed Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo and many thanks for joining us this beautiful morning. We head straight to the papers as always. We have on Mondays uh, with Okuna Bonkataria. It's good to have you join us. Okuna Bonkataria is a public affairs analyst. Good morning. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Nigerians. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning to you, sir. Let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning and uh, find out what the Punch is reporting. The banner caption says, APC convention. Talking about that convention that's slated for the 26th of March. Southwest governors reject Buhari's allies as secretary and vice chair. Uh, that's boldly written on the Punch this morning. It says, external forces trying to impose peasants on Southwest, says Akira Dolu, Adamu, Al Makura, Musa divided as National Assembly over a National Assembly over chairmanship race. Uh, it's still uh, the rider underneath the board caption. Now, federal government incurs fresh 950 billion naira domestic borrowings in first quarter of 2022. That's what the DMO is quoted to say. Saraki Tambowal meets and plans consensus candidate to lobby Atiku. Interesting. And Malami Oke's seizure of Kiari's accomplices' property and accounts. Uh, that's what you also find this morning. Just before we move away from the punch, Buhari Alouf, away well Nigeria bonds, economy crushing. That's what uh, crushing. That's what the PDP is quoted to say. Over seventy percent of drugs dispensed in Nigeria substandard. Farmers and headers clash. A Fanny Ferry Falls planned law to make non native indigents. And you also find Obiano's water drinking a video EFCC on witch hunt alleges Abgar. Uh, these are some of the headlines you find on the punch this morning. Let's move straight to the nation with these headlines uh, APC Convention, APC Convention, Southwest picks KK Meke Omishere with the following writers Akeridolu warns against interference as parents screening failed to hold yesterday and senators splits on musa adamu al makura interesting times in the party at the top of that front page you have these headlines unions to cripple vasties nuts as naat began strike sanu nasu Warm up that's the uh, senior staff association of Nigerian universities and the non academic staff union. Um, what does the future hold for our academic system? More from the nation newspaper Buhari federal government reviewing southeast security. Obiozo's house attack fled. Let's talk about the attack on the house of a leader of Ohaneze in Digbo. Policemen not authorized to check customs paper and this was also a big issue over the weekend policemen not authorized to check customs paper as they talked about also um uh, uh the tinted glasses as well of vehicles 700 idps or 700,000 idps in my state governor laments 700,000 idps in my state governor laments more from the nation newspaper Tambual Bala Saraki ready for North's consensus candidate. Controversy rages on over zoning in PDP. Share deals put 20 directors on stock market blacklist. Share deals put 20 directors on stock market blacklist. Saraki's associate 14 groups defect to APC in Quara. And at the bottom of that front page, we have ex-Eagle stars on a table at 70 with Nobelty football match. Ex-Eagle stars on a table at 70 with Nobelty football match. And vessel held over suspected crude oil theft, two arrested for bikers murder. Our stories on the front page of The Nation. Away from the nation, we take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Convention, APC postponed screening of aspirant over poor preparation. And you also find 2023 presidency amid Southern agitation, Tambuwal Mohammed Saraki opt for consensus. To make position known soon, Atiku declares on Wednesday. 
DMO speaks on Nigeria's public debt is also another uh, header this morning on the leadership and COVID-19 intervention. CBN extends 5% interest by one year. Uh, 2023 elections will determine future of Nigeria. Uh, this is what Peter Obi is quoted to say. And President Mohamed Buhari condemns violence in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Uh, it's fine to... Uh, see that as well on the leadership. For a new student with slit throat for 10 million naira surgery abroad, and that's still also on the leadership newspaper. That's the much we can take on the leadership. And finally, the Daily Independent with these headlines. Weak oil production subsidies may erode gains of rising prices. Weak oil production subsidies may erode gains of rising oil prices let's go to the top of that front page discordant tunes trail airlines attempt to import aviation fuel hardship may trigger nationwide agitation worse than NSAS pdp hardship may trigger nationwide agitation worse than NSAS pdp more from that paper anti buni governors a plan to revolt against buhari at apc Convention. No cause for alarm, says presidency. I don't know whether those are the Yahoo Yahoo governors had that Karadolu was referring to a couple of weeks ago. More from the Daily Independent. PDP presidential primary. We are ready for consensus candidate. Saraki details on page seven. MPC all eyes on CBN as rate hike tops agenda. That's talking about the marginal uh, monetary policy committee and the monetary policy rate or the interest rate as it's popularly called. Five billionaire investment in ruins as FAN demolishes AIB regional office. Five billion naira investment in ruins as FAN demolishes AIB regional office. And finally from that paper, APC chairmanship, Sharif steps down, vows not to work against Buhari. Sharif steps down, uh, vows not to work against Buhari. These are the headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. Now to introduce our guest analyst uh, at this time, he's a public affairs analyst, Opunabo Nkotara. Ms. Nkotara, thanks for your time. Let's quickly move straight to the um, first one on the Daily Independent. Uh, the People's Democratic Party um, saying that the hardship that Nigerians are currently going through may trigger agitations worse than answers. Is this the case or is the PDP trying um, to trigger something themselves? Uh, it's an irreparable fact. I mean, uh, you are also aware, you also feel the uh, it, I don't need to emphasize that. I mean, uh, the economic appreciation is affecting everybody. We also are talking of uh, recent well price uh, hike in the price of petroleum products and the domino effects. You know? And most times when you have this uh, hike, they never come down. So you also, it is going to affect your garage, it's going to affect your uh, pineapple, it's going to affect, it does a domino effect, it will cascade. And uh, if, if you also talk of the power, there is no light. Of course, they said they work on the international grid or whatever they call it. But the uh, power situation is still very poor. And there is so much, that is what I would refer to as uh, bewildering frustration and corroding bitterness uh, in, the, in the country. So a lot of people are disillusioned. A lot of people are despondent. And you know, when a man is despondent, when a man is disillusioned, when a man does not see, when his hopes are dashed and the uh, promise of a brighter future is shipwrecked, what do you expect him to do? Of course, he resolves to violence. Because uh, a hungry man, they say, is an angry man. And an angry man is more or less like a madman. And that is why PDP is talking of uh, for the possibility of anarchy in the land. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that uh, it's going to happen between now and 2023. We don't pray for that to happen as Nigerians. I will not say as um, uh, committed or devoted Nigerians, because none is committed, none is devoted. But I just pray that it doesn't happen between now and 2023. It is probably after 2023 the situation festers that we, we could be talking because right now the political engine is created, social climate is steadily inflammatory, economic atmosphere highly combustible. 
were headed slowly but steadily or cautious to prevent the whole that panic. But we pray that uh, it doesn't take the speed. I will also enjoy Nigerians to just uh, be a little bit patient. Let's see if there are going to be a change of battle. And if that change of battle will uh, uh, bring in a spring of hope to Nigerians. So I don't think it's going to happen between now and then. If at all, Nigeria is going to be a mess in any form of crisis, it is going to be a patient by political crisis, but not necessarily economic action. All right, open up on Qatari. Let's uh, take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. It talks about the fact that Nigeria is also dabbling into uh, some fresh borrowings. Uh, this time we're looking at domestic borrowings of 950 billion naira. This is according to the DMO in the first quarter of uh, 2022. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, Messi, I think we've talked about this borrowing for so long. It's an overflowed issue. Uh, first, I'm not as fast to borrow it. There is hardly any country in this world that is not in fair. See, but the rationale behind the borrowing is what is important. What are you borrowing for? Are you borrowing for recurrent expenditure or capital? That's the issue. Uh, the other is talking about the debt. I'm, I'm actually not seeing that they pass. In other words, it breaks down why you have to borrow it. Are they borrowing to buy cars for the general public? Are they borrowing to um, uh, give other states 500 million naira as my state government is doing? We will borrow money and will now support other states. Or are they borrowing for capital expenditure? So it depends on why you're borrowing. So I'm not really, like I said, I'm not averse to borrowing at all, but they, it has to be done judiciously. And the money borrowed must be spent through them. That is my own issue on the issue of borrowing. So if they say, well, even if we are owing $1 trillion, why are we owing $1 trillion? And uh, what is that $1 trillion? Why did we borrow the $1 trillion? Now, we have to of that internally so that we avoid the borrowing. And that comes to probably a situation where you have to borrow because you want to travel abroad, you want to embark on medical authority. You have to borrow because you want to buy new cars. Look at what the Ananda State Governor is doing right now. So look, this is really nothing. And that is that way you're generating funds. That is internally generated where you're creating jobs and you're not you're saving our forex. So you're not you're going to reduce the amount of to borrow. So it all depends on why you're borrowing. But in this part of the world, or in this in Nigeria, why it is an issue is because we borrow for frivolities. That's why it is an issue. That's all they say. You are borrowing. You borrow for free. You see somebody borrowing. Now, let's take hypothetically. If the president will now say he wants to borrow, let's say, about $100 million. Now, he borrows the $100 million. From the $100 million, he's spending $20 million on his medical trip abroad. What is the rationale? Now, you are borrowing because you want to buy cars for National Assembly members. Why? And those cars, each of the SCB cars, will probably cost about $60 million or 70 million naira, or 80 million naira, as the case may be. Meanwhile, if you spend half of that money, you're going to get the cash for innocent. And that might reduce the cost of borrowing, the amount you're going to borrow. So it all depends on why you're borrowing and how the money is being spent. Otherwise, there is absolutely nothing wrong with borrowing. But in Nigeria here, we borrow for frivolity. We borrow because we believe that if we are not going to pay, the country is going to pay. And that is why we borrow. So that is, the, that is my take on borrowing. All right. Uh, I'll put up, let, let, let's uh, stick with the Daily Independent. And um, as a, the lead story on that paper, which says uh, weak oil production um, subsidies may erode gains of rising prices. And what the paper is saying is this. As many countries uh, take advantage of uh, current high prices of oil necessitated by the war in Ukraine, Nigeria's case may be the opposite, as this is hampered by weak oil production and fuel subsidy, which uh, will erode the positive impact, according to analysts. Um, um, so, so what are your thoughts on this? They're saying oil production has been falling in Nigeria due to lack of investment and continued bunkering with an estimated 150,000 barrels per day of crude loss. I, you, you're from the South, South Niger Delta. I don't know if you've seen this uh, level of bunkering in Nigeria's history, but your thoughts on, on this uh, headline from, from that paper, this story from that paper? Well, yes, illegal bunkering has a uh, great negative impact. No doubt about that. Because uh, what normally the revenue the government would have gotten 
has been um, um, out stolen, let me put it that way, by oil thieves. No doubt about it. So it's going to affect the uh, revenue, definitely, the federal government. Part. But again, you also have a panacea to that. Now, what is the panacea? We are talking about modular refineries. Because now, most of this, I read, as if uh, the Guardian of London or something, we had to say, most of these illegal uh, bunkering activities, the, what the products are even better than what we imported. And that was bolstered by recently the PMS that was imported, you know, that destroyed our engines. Meanwhile, the so-called, what we call in our local parlance, so-called coal fire. And a lot of us use that coal fire, and it has not destroyed any engine. And these people hone their skills. They improve on the illegal bunkering. So uh, that is one aspect of it. Nevertheless, on the issue of, uh, they should not uh, hinge it on the level bunk in the world. The major problem we have is the refineries that are not working. You know, you, you export our crude and import the crude. I still cannot rationalize that. I still cannot come to terms. I can't decipher who, who I dated that and why it is being sustained. The answer is simple, corruption. You have a cartel, a microscopic field that are benefiting from this. And that they don't want to stop it. But as if you refine, how can you even talk of profit? <laughs> you get your crude. You export the crude. You refine the crude there and bring it back. Copy, oh God of Israel. How, how are we created in this country? Yeah, maybe How Secretary, it's interesting you're calling God. Yes. Maybe we might need him to, to solve the problems for us. But, um, I mean, no, but how do you feel? First, before, before God will help you now, you have to ask yourself. Uh, but but there don't be any madman on the street. Yes, but, but last, last week, last week uh, Tony Elumelu, no less a person, um, uh, claimed that um, even the likes of Shell, of course, ha have had to declare force majeure. He says that um, at le at almost 90, more than 90% of Nigeria's uh, uh, um, uh, oil and gas is stolen. G oil, right, crude oil is stolen. And the companies who rely on this to, to produce or to do what, what they have to do cannot meet up to the demands and to their business um, obligations because of that. Okay. So is, is, do we, are we having okay. just, just uh, militants or oil thieves stealing this 90%? Kofi, Kofi, when you say, when you talk of militants, let us face it, you know, if you, let's say you have about um, 10 militants, hypothetically, you have about 10 militants involved with this illegal bunker, you know, out of the 10, only three of them are doing that on their own, that are their own masters. The remaining seven are just mercenaries. That's the truth about, you know, they work for people. You know, that's why I say it's a cartel, you know. They work for people. And the truth about it is that, yes, we agree you have this uh, oil bunker, illegal oil bunker going on. This is not the first time. It is not new. It is not novel. Illegal bunker has been there right from time. But how come we were making profits? Because our refineries were working. Why is the illegal bunker business thriving? Simply because you have the big weeds that don't want the refineries to work behind it. So it, it, it's a complex situation. You know, it's like generators. You can never have our power system function effectively. Otherwise, it's going to affect the importation of generators. And by extension, affect the uh, gains of those that are importing generators. Nigerians tried it in Ghana, and Ghana drove Nigerians away. Nigerians were trying to import generators to Ghana some years back. And it was a major problem. So this is, this is the issue. You have a cartel. And the problem is that the government is not willing to address this issue, confront it frontally. Because you, you shout before you get into office. By then you get into office, the cartel will come and approach you. First and foremost, they are even part of, they are even the major sponsors of your uh, election. And after that, they come and approach you. Then you turn a blind eye. That is what is happening. You cannot talk of profit when the finance are not working. It is not possible. That would be a fleeting illusion. It is like backing on the sticky wicket. How can you talk of profit when, 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 when your refiners are not working? You can't talk of profit. You're exporting. Look at forex. You're importing forex. Then that's why when people talk of subsidy, we just laugh. What do you mean by subsidy? So it's a cartel thing. And if the government is prepared, first you have to make sure the refiners are working. Then, after that, you address this cartel issue. It is simple. You know, it, it's like what you did, drug laws in Colombia and so on. That's what is happening. 
It's not as if it, it is a, 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 a intangible. It is not. It is not. But the willingness to so do is a problem. Let's, let's take a look at the statement that's been made by former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi. He talks about uh, the 2020, uh, 2023 elections and how it would be um, a shipping factor for the future of Nigeria. Now, I'd like to ask, you know, just uh, beyond all of that, are, are we really, really in the courts? When you look at the stakeholders from the uh, body that saddled with the responsibility of conducting elections, we're talking about the electoral umpire, uh, that's INEC, to the political parties, to Nigerians themselves. Are, are, are we actually working towards ensuring that um, we're taking the right decision in order to shape our future come 2023? When you say we, are you talking about we as a country? So I have mentioned you all know? of this. I've, I've mentioned all of the stakeholders involved. Inet, I've talked about the electoral yeah, umpire. Inet, I've talked Inet about Inet is, the political Inet parties. INEC is committed to free, fair, and transparent elections. That is indisputable. That is nothing down. INEC is that. I must commend INEC. It's committed to that. Now, the gladiators are they. You see, there are contending interests in this whole thing, contending and competing interests. And the Nigerian public, Nigerian politicians believe that if he doesn't get it, then he has to walk the court. That's the truth about it. Now, you take the APC for example. The APC is immersed in its crisis simply because of ego. There is this macabre dance at the theater of ego. It's a crazy spin of lunacy. It has to be me. If it is not me, nothing. Even Boom is guilty of that. You can imagine how he hit the court judge because order restraining the convention because he wanted to superintend uh, over the convention, the primary, sorry, so that he will have a say who emerges as the candidate. See, these are the issues. So they play havoc with the destiny of their party and by extension, the destiny of the country. The fortunes. That is the problem. So if you ask me, I say, I'm next. But if you talk of uh, the gladiators, I'm talking of. Now the politicians I'm talking of now, of course, you can't talk of, we can't divorce the politicians from the political party. Because political party is not a human being. It's a legal entity, personality, no doubt, but it's not a human being to speak, you know? So, you, 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 it, 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 the politicians that are members of the political party, are they sincere? Do they have the interest of the nation at heart? No. They have the interest, they, they have their own interest at heart. And that they place a goal that of the nation. And that is the problem we're having. And that is why the PDP is also talking. Now, when PDP is talking of um, the possibility of crisis between now and 2023, not necessarily because of the economy. There is like a people. It's do or die. We have to take it. If we don't take it, then there won't be any Nigeria. So, it has nothing to do with INEC. INEC Yes, we must commend INS of it has done real but, but, how, but how would you how would you rate and how would you describe the, the politicians? No. How would you describe the yes, actions yes. and the attitude of Nigerians in, in in you know shaping the future of our country for twenty twenty three? There is no there is nothing there is nothing there is nothing when you talk of Nigeria, unless you are a major player, what role can you the only role the Nigerian, the ordinary Nigerian can play is to ensure that he votes. To effect the change he wants. That's the only rule. The next thing is what result to protest. Demonstration. Which will be like a referendum of the disapproval of the system. That's the only thing. You see that you cast your vote. And that's why we are calling on Nigerians to ensure that they cast the You see, you cannot sit on the fence. Because whatever happens affects you. They are not even talking of him direct, directly. Because you go to the market. Now we are talking of exponential uh, 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 rise in the cost of uh, 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 commodities. It affects everybody. It's not selective. So you just have to cast your vote. Go and ensure that you get your PVC and on that day you vote. Don't sell your conscience. That is the only role that the, the ordinary Nigerian can play. What else is he going to do? He doesn't have the money to contest any election. All right. shout from now to tomorrow. No, no, nobody's going to listen to it. Okay, Mr. Secretary, let, let's That's move on. Room. Yeah, let's move on to another story. Um, uh, the Daily Independent has an interesting one, and I think uh, this is one, if not the only paper, one of you uh, who gives uh, space on its front page to uh, the ongoing 
crisis in Ukraine or the what it, it calls the Russia-Ukraine war. It tells us that uh, pledged President Vladimir Putin of Russia has, has agreed to face-to-face -to -face talks with uh, Zelensky, the president of, uh, of Ukraine, um, in the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine. It says that, that the two leaders have let their diplomatic teams conduct peace talks on neutral ground since shortly after the start of the conflict on February 24. What are your thoughts? Is Putin... Is this an indication that, that Vladimir Putin is beginning to feel the heat? Yeah, we're talking about feeling the heat. That's not really, I mean, he's feeling the heat. I mean, but um, I think uh, that is, how will I call it, uh, a Fabian policy. So I, I, I am not really pleased with uh, Putin, the president, uh, but I don't want to uh, use certain names. Uh, that man doesn't deserve to be on earth. Because the war is senseless. It's just a show of bravado. I am in charge. I can do. And I'm just so sad that the international community is also afraid of it. I think if a smaller nation had done carried out this task that we had as act, I don't think other nations would have sat back or would just be mounting biosy relevances and get up in the morning. This is wrong. This is wrong. Certain steps must be taken. Lives have been lost. Nation destroyed. And you now talk of Georgia. What, what other step are you going to do? To a minority. What are you going to do? You know, a lot of people left Ukraine. They are now refugees in other countries. To rebuild that country, what are the installations? You're talking about the, uh, what this uh, power installation, this... Uh, the, uh, nuclear and all those things like that. But he did that in order to weaken Ukraine. Now, you are talking of peace. The, the, the world pleaded with you never to commence this war. You refused. Why did they refuse? That was the same peace that the, the, the international. <coughs> Excuse me, shortly before the date, you went. You lost. Now you are talking of peace because you have achieved your aim. There must be consequences for your action. But it's the world power. It's very one of the strongest world powers. In fact, it's that to be Russia, America, before any other country. And Putin is aware of this. So he's taking due advantage of his position. And that is why a lot of people are not angry. But what are you going to do? What am I going to say? But I think the international community, the world leaders, they, that is why they are world leaders, they can agree, reach a conclusion on how best to deal with Putin. Because no nation can stand on this point. No nation at all. So they can agree on how best to deal with Putin. Because if they don't, this will just be the beginning of bigger like bigger nations attacking smaller nations. And all we'll do after destroying the nation is to sit down and talk, uh, cease fire, do that. What of the nation, what of the things that have been destroyed, the nation that has been destroyed, what, uh, what are the remedies? What steps are you going to take to address that one? That is the problem. So, Putin definitely be the one who wasn't going to last forever. Putin knew that he was going to invade Ukraine maybe for two weeks, one month or two months, given his military prowess. He knew how long he was going to take. And he has achieved this. And he's talking of peace right now. That's unfair. That's complicated. That's callous. That's complicated. Open up on the was not about that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we do appreciate your thoughts and your time as well on the show. And of course, we look forward to having you. Maybe you need to take a glass of water after this time out. Thank you so much for being part of yes, uh, I do. the breakfast Yes, I do. I do. Thank you. Opuna Bonkatara is a public Thank affairs so analyst and he's always with us on Mondays. Uh, we appreciate you all the time. And that's the size of it for Off the Press. Uh, let's tell you what happened today in history. And when we return, we'll be heading straight to our first major conversation where we look at the fact that Section 84, Subsection 12, uh, there's been that request to delete that part from the Constitution. We find out what that means for us as we head uh, towards 2023 elections. Please stay with us.